The first U.S. airstrike on Libya was actually carried out 25 years ago during the Reagan administration and has since been followed by a number of other U.S.-led military campaigns. And now with Obama's involvement in Libya, it seems that conflict and the American presidency once again go hand in hand. RT's Christine Frizzell looks back at a controversial timeline. It's become an unspoken addendum to the job description become president of the United States, declare war. My fellow Americans. My fellow citizens. For President Ronald Reagan in 1986, a familiar attack on a familiar enemy. Despite our repeated warnings, Gaddafi continued his reckless policy of intimidation, his relentless pursuit of terror. He counted on America to be passive. He counted wrong. Turns out, so did Saddam Hussein. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. For his successor, President Clinton, the target was Slobodan Milosevic. Today, our armed forces joined our NATO allies in airstrikes against Serbian forces responsible for the brutality in Kosovo. President George W. Bush said it was weapons of mass destruction that threatened the world and invaded Iraq in what was supposed to be a quick, and limited campaign. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. Most thought it would end there. With President Obama running on an anti-war platform, he has spent most of his presidency trying to end the wars started by his predecessor. Until now. The UN Security Council passed a strong resolution that demands an end to the violence against citizens. It authorizes the use of force. In the timeline of recent history, there have been some glaring similarities when it comes to the use of force by U.S. presidents. None have been in response to a military attack or even threat of an attack on U.S. soil, and none have ever been formally declared wars. We act to protect thousands of innocent people in Kosovo from a mounting military offensive. We are determined to knock out Saddam Hussein's nuclear bomb potential. We will also destroy his chemical weapons facilities. Self-defense is not only our right, it is our duty. The definition of duty often changing. The result, eerily parallel. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless America. Thank you very much. Christine Frizzell, RT.